Princess Leia hair do on? Check. Hey everybody, welcome to lecture four, SQ1 MS20 integration. Those of you who have been following my lectures, you note something. New digs, right? Yes. Uh, with the pandemic, we've all pretty much been home, the whole family, right? So we've had to change things around in the house a little bit to give everybody some personal space. I ended up in the cellar, all right? But what a great space. I have a beer fridge, I have a fireplace, I have all kinds of room, so I have no complaints. However, it is a pandemic, right? At this point, we've lost 1.2 million souls worldwide, over 200,000 in the US. Uh, at this point, at this rate, the trajectory we're heading right now, um, if things don't change dramatically this fall, we will see maybe upwards of 400,000 uh, in the U.S. parish. Look, if you're an EMT, if you're medical, if you're on the front lines, uh, medical providers, thank you. Thank you. You, you, you didn't bargain for this. You're helping us. Thank you. Um, if you've lost a loved one, a uh, friend, family member, maybe even somebody at work you you didn't like so much, but still, it gets you, right? Uh, you're in my thoughts. And it's not just lives, it's livelihoods, right? If you've lost your job, if you've lost your company, if you've lost your income, if you're struggling to make ends meet, this is real, man. Uh, my, you're, also, you're also in my thoughts. But that's not why you're here. <laughs> you're, you're here, you keyword searched MS20, SQ1 uh, integration. And uh, let's go forward with the lecture. So this lecture came from viewer requests, subscriber and viewer requests. So uh, either through Reddit or my YouTube channel. And the plan here is this. We're going to look at voltage control insights. We're going to find out, first and foremost, you guys asked, how did I make that chart? Right, the lecture two and three. Well, we're going to talk about the hardware you need to make that voltage control chart. Then we're gonna step through that voltage control chart, how to actually do it, either utilizing the MS20 or the SQ1. You can do both, I'll show you both ways. Then more questions came through about transposing the SQ1, MS20 sort of integration. How do I make those two things work in a way that I wanna make them work? How do I make the keyboard transpose from what's coming from the SQ1? I will show you how to do that. And I'll also then give you some deep down secrets as to why this works that way. There will be some bailout points of this lecture. This is by far the longest lecture you will have seen from me. My engineering students complain about how long my lectures are and now you can too. The first bailout point will simply be that voltage control chart. We'll go through it, how to make it. If that's all you need, then end the video and move on the rest of your life and you're happy. If, however, you want to take the next step and learn how to set up your SQ1 to be able to make it transposable, I will then give you a screenshot of my setup. You can take a screenshot of that, take it along with you, uh, plagiarize to your heart's content, that's why I offer it. Plagiarism is the highest form of flattery, except at a public university, so don't do it there. If, however, you want to know why it works, how to make it work, how to be effective with it, musically effective with it, in terms of workflow and knowledge, you're gonna to have to hang with me for the rest of the video. All right, so first things first, let's get that hardware sorted. So first thing you need is that cord, that cord that I do it, do it myself, right? You can actually buy the cord ready-made without the banana plugs. You'll need two banana plugs as well, but you can pick that cord up, uh, at least in the US, uh, on Amazon and Canada uh, on Amazon. I suspect a similar cord will be available. You know, go to Amazon, you'll find something, type those words in that you see here, you'll find something. Make sure it's long enough. I made my cord too doggone short. Make yours longer, it makes it a lot easier to work with. You'll also need some banana plugs. Real simple, screw in type, the threaded enables you to kind of crush that wire. Now I uh, also then recommend you sort, sort of use some, some tape or something to hold the wire, uh, the two wires out that are coming out of the banana plugs to make them a little more durable, otherwise they'll easily break. So you want to secure them. And then finally, you'll need a digital multimeter. You don't have to buy a super fancy digital multimeter, but you're going to have to spend a little bit of money. 
You need something that's going to be around, uh, you know, a sample rate of about 10 or 12 samples per second, 10 or 12 hertz. That will give you enough resolution to see what's going on. I also, me personally, like to have that little bar that runs across the, there's like a scale that kind of kind of bops back and forth on the DMM as you're making measurements. You can kind of see then visually which direction you're headed. You can see the digital number. And again, it's got enough resolution speed, sample rates to give you what you need. You may spend, end up spending 50 US dollars, a bit more maybe, to buy yourself the right digital multimeter to make this work. If the multimeter is too slow, if the sample rate is too slow, you're going to have a heck of a time having the sample and keep up with the work you're doing on the SQ1. Okay, so there are two ways to build this, right? One is to use the MS20 and one is to use the SQ1. You get the same, the same deal, right? So uh, we put our keyboard voltage out. We want to measure mm -hmm. keyboard voltage out. Where you could be anywhere you want, but I've got it at eight feet. Go ahead and put my com in and my uh, voltage positive in. And there is our low C2. And what we'll do is we'll take that number and we'll record low C2. And then we'll go up next. All the way up. Right up, there's um, that's uh, 2045 at C3, 2045 at C3, 2046. So, this is a way of building your voltage chart. The other way to do this then is with the SQ1. I've got uh, my SQ1 CVA out, I'm plugging that into VCO2 in, right? But I also want to monitor it. So let's go ahead and get my digital multimeter snapped in there as well. So both things will happen. I will see a voltage out that will go into my MS20. I'll see a voltage out that I can monitor from my digital multimeter. And what I'll do then is I'm going to turn off all of these other pots. I want to make sure I'm on 8 volt chromatic. You see there I'm hitting the function button. I'm on 8 volt chromatic. I'm also on active step. I want to be on active step. And I can go ahead and hit start. And then I've got the gate here to trigger in on the mod wheel. So I can go ahead and pull this down then. Pull my mod wheel down. And now I'm hearing, it's a little loud, now I'm hearing what the output from the SQ1 is doing to voltage control oscillator one. Excuse me, two, oscillator two. I said one, I meant two. Turn this back up, right? And I'm right now sitting at C2. I've got the pot turned all the way down. C2 should come in at 10.023, 10.022. I'm gonna slowly then turn that pot Watch the DMM and listen. Okay, that's the next note. That's C sharp. It sounds like C sharp. And it's coming in at 10.1.084. Uh, I call it 1084, but 1.084, 1.083. Uh, last time I did it, it came in at 1.085. Next one up. 1147. That should be D2, 1148. In fact, we can, we can verify that, I think. If I turn my VCO1 up, get that on 8 volts. Yeah, so now I'm listening to VCO1 coming from the keyboard and VCO2 coming from the SQ1, and they sound essentially similar. I, I mean, I may have to adjust the pitch a little bit to get them to be out of, get them to be in phase. But here we go. I just changed for 16 feet on VCO1, kept myself 8 feet on VCO2, but again, we're playing, both playing D2, uh, and we're at 1148. And the idea here then, ah, silence.
the idea here then is to march up with the pot note by note by note as you rotate the pot you'll hear the next note you'll record that data and you will build your entire sheet from c2 up to c5 utilizing the chromatic voltage output one to eight volts on the sq1 so there you have it that's the first step of the process making your voltage control chart you've got the dmm sorted out at least you know what you want to get you know how to make that cord and you know how to make the chart so if that was what you were looking for bam done checkpoint one right that's the bailout point number one which is just about to go <laughs> gone bailout point number one's gone we're on heading on to bailout point number two that is this take a look see at my setup sheet you know i always have these setup sheets every time we go through these lectures you got to take good notes so you know where you are this setup sheet enables you to modulate the signal from the sq1 and to transpose modals programmed by the sq1 utilizing the ms20 as a control voltage you can also see in the picture i have the high pass and low pass filters being controlled by the mod wheel so if this makes sense to you and it's like oh that's how you do it then fine get your screenshot and off you go poof that was checkpoint number two just went by like that all right if you want to know how to make this thing work in terms of workflow in terms of musical inspiration in terms of you know just being able to be successful with it this is the bulk of the lecture this is kind of going to be a bit of a slog right so if you're watching this video kind of lying in bed putting yourself to sleep watching music videos stop <laughs> stop right there right get a good night's sleep if it's late in the afternoon get yourself a monster energy drink a cup of espresso something you're gonna need some little kick all right because this is gonna get a touch bit deep workflow modulation voltage a little bit of theory all right you ready let's do this thing now that we have our chart developed, we can utilize it, right? One thing you can do with this chart, obviously, is program the SQ1 based on whatever key progression you'd like, whether it be chromatic, whether it be a major or minor scale, right? I, but it's kind of mechanical, right? You could even have, in this case, I have two four-note modals. I have a, what I'm calling the blue modal and the red modal. The blue note modal is the first four notes. And if I had that programmed into channel A on the SQ1, and I had these four red notes programmed into channel B, and I could I could gate them differently and have it run, and it's going to be a ba 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 ba. It's kind of you know I get that. That's not what I want, right? I want to be more musical. I want to have the SQ1 and the MS20 play along with some other synthesizer or other piece of music I'm playing with. I'd like to be able to transpose it on my time, not on the SQ1 time. So these four notes, the floor blue notes and the floor, floor red notes, that'll be our first step in actually actively transposing the SQ1 to our musical desires. So we have our, we get our red dots and our blue dots on here, and those are on a keyboard. And we can then look at these voltage blocks sort of in the scale of C, right? And determine where do these keys fit in which of these scales, these methods of scaling, right? And it's not pentatonic, you know, it's not the blues, it's not Phrygian, it's not really a minor, it's not really, do ooh, there it is. It's Mixolydian. And look at that. We actually get an extra key right here. We didn't even know that was part of it, right? What does a Mixolydian scale sound like? On the front panel, the patch bay panel of the MS-20, you will find something that says, VCA on it, but it's actually the modulation voltage control amplifier. I think some folks call it the VCA2, and it has two inputs. It has two input ports for our 
mini 3.5 liter plugs, right? One import, one input, we're going to call that voltage in. The other uh, input's going to be the control voltage. Control voltage will come in, and then we'll have a V out. So pretty much all amplifiers look like this, right? So at least voltage control amplifiers. Our V in is going to come from the SQ1. And on the SQ1, you know, we have two rows of eight pots. We're going to be on channel A, the first four pots. We're going to set that from zero to five volt range linear. And that will be the control voltages that we actually dial in to manage the voltage in to the uh, modulation voltage control amplifier. The control voltage, and that's the V in, control voltage is going to come from the MS20. And we're going to utilize actually two keys on the MS20 keyboard. We're going to utilize the C2 key, C, excuse me, three, C3 key, right? And the C3 key puts out a voltage of 2.040 volts. We know that because we've gone ahead and done that work before, right? And we're also, and that's going to be the baseline voltage control to reach our red modal. We're also going to be programming or using, utilizing the a2 flat key on the keyboard, and that's going to put out 1.622 volts, and that's going to be our blue modal. So what this enables us to do is to have the SQ1 pound along <laughs> with a four note progression based on the key that we hit, and the key that we hit will come from the keyboard, 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 it's a D and it's supposed to be a D, all right, keyboard CV out on the MS20, and it will then generate a control voltage that spits out the blue modal and the red modal based on our musical desires. And we'll make sure that we use the C3 key as sort of our standard reference, and then we'll set the uh, MS20 up, uh, voltage control up, while measuring the output voltage from the VCA to assure that we're getting the output we want. And then from there, we modify it by hitting uh, the A2 flat key, and we can hear those two models in progression play. Quick review. So we just built a model of the MS20 MVCA, Modulating Voltage Control Amplifier, or VCA2. We're gonna have, sending in, we're gonna have the SQ1 throw in that four note modal, We'll program that in a second. I'll show you how to do that, right? We're also going to have the MS20 then dump in the control voltage utilizing only two keys from the keyboard on the MS20, the C3 key and the A2 flat key. And we know the voltages on those because we made that voltage chart. In fact, if it wasn't for our making the voltage chart at the beginning of this video, we would have a tremendously difficult time putting this whole thing together. Now, the next five minutes of this lecture is going to get pretty geeky. It's, <laughs> all right, we're going to race backwards in time and talk about sort of the beginnings of musical scales. We're going to come zipping forward and how to apply that with a control voltage to be able to manage the modal modifications, the modal transposition we desire. All right, so hold on to your hats, folks. Here we go. So here is a frequency to keyboard note progression graph. And what this is, is for every key on the keyboard, and it, this is a well-tempered clavier, a well-tempered keyboard, where uh, A, the note of A is sort of the, the fundamental note, right? Um, fundamental frequency. We see that from C2 up to C5, this is the Korg MS20 keyboard. If we were to look and actually measure the frequency in hertz, the sound frequency, it would achieve this curve, it would achieve this curve. And what's interesting to note here is this is actually exponential, right? F to the N equals 440 uh, times two to N over 12. This 440 represents the note of A at a certain octave, and then everything runs from the note of A. That's just how we developed our musical scale, our European musical scale. There are other musical scales, other world scales, but when we talk about our synthesizer, the MS-20, the SQ-1, um, on our octave by octave scale, this uh, equation and this exponential curve is the relationship between the note on the keyboard 
and the frequency that we hear. If you were to plot the data we just took, the chromatic uh, eight foot scale uh, on our Korg MS-20, that sheet we just made from the key uh, on the keyboard from C2 up to C5, and plotted with respect to the keyboard hit, the voltage output, the voltage that we measured from one to eight volts, we see this curve. If you overlay this curve onto the curve I just showed you, they are identical. The output voltages on the curve, right, based on the key, it's not linear. Again, it's based on that exponential function. What's interesting to note, and we're going to see this when we step, take a step through this, that the 5 volt control, the 5 volt control that we're going to be messing with on the uh, MS20 and SQ1 has us residing on most of the keyboard, right? Most of the keyboard, if we run from C2, right, all the way up to somewhere around here, I think which is E4, this represents zero, excuse me, one to five volts, one to five volts. So if we plot the frequency against the control voltage, and again, the frequency is essentially each one of the keys on the MS-20 keyboard, starting at C2 all the way up to C5. What we note is for each successive, these are all the successive keys, keystrokes basically on the keyboard. For each successive key from running from C2 to C5, as we get further and further out the end of the keyboard, the, the frequency, right, grows. The difference between the previous key and the next key's frequency grows, as does the voltage difference, right? So down here, we have a very, 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 very tight grouping which means we have a tremendous amount of control in terms of what voltage output we can generate from the MS-20. Right? We can have a lot of control because each step as we turn the knob on the SQ-1, or each step as we hit the key on the, key the keyboard control gives us a much finer control over voltage. When we talk about managing a voltage control amplifier, the control voltage, we want to have as much resolution as possible. What this says is, when we're trying to control our control voltage on this amplifier, we want to run the voltages down here between, you know, zero, or at least in this case, between one and three, one and three volts. That's kind of the sweet spot in terms of voltage resolution. Because remember, when we generate the sounds from the modal, right, we're going to be messing with the voltage so that it sounds right and every key we stroke will have an impact on the frequency that the MS-20 puts out. If the, the change in frequency is too great, we'll never be able to get a modal to sound musically correct. It will, the, 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 the frequency change will be too much, and as this modal is progressing up and down the keyboard, it'll begin to sound wrong, because the steps will be wrong. We want these steps to be as well-tempered as possible with the control voltage in the amplifier to generate the modal that sounds the best. And you'll see as we do that, we have to make some compromises. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> This is exactly what my students do, right? Um, lecturing up in front of the class, somebody's in the back, they've lost it, and it's like, Ms. Cornelius, are you with me? <laughs> so, look, I told you five minutes, right? I wasn't kidding. Here's the deal, right? We're learning how to utilize the keyboard on the MS-20 as not as a keyboard, but as a voltage controlled device. And when we look at that curve with the little dots very, very, very close together at the low end of the curve, that's the low end of the keyboard of the MS-20. Each key there gives you fine voltage resolution from one key to the next. That's the region we want to utilize as our control voltage. We don't want to use the upper registers of the keyboard on the MS-20. That's no bueno, right? Those are too far apart. Those key voltages are too far apart. 
That's the point of this. How do you learn to utilize the MS-20, not as a keyboard to play musically, but as a keyboard to give you a, an assured control voltage time and time again as you bop back and forth on the modals? You can have one modal, you could have two modals, you could have three modals, you could have all kinds of transpositions going on, four, eight note, different modals that you're bopping back and forth on, but you're utilizing the keyboard to manage those transpositions from one modal to the next. All right, having said that, let's roll on. What this enables us to do then is to play along with a Mixolydian scale, the SQ1 pumping out the program, the MS-20 giving us that modulation control over the voltage control amplifier, and then we can choose when we want to transpose the modal to our musical desires. All right, enough theory, enough workflow. Let's get this puppy programmed. All right, program time! So we're going to utilize the SQ-1. We'll use CVA out. That will be our input voltage into our M. VCA, our modulated voltage control amplifier, or as some folks call it, VCA2. We're going to take our keyboard out from the MS-20, keyboard CV out, and that control voltage will be the control voltage to VCA2 and VCA. And then the output from the input voltage and the control voltage out of VCA2 or the MVCA, MCVA, MVCA, let's get that right, it's going to go into voltage control oscillator 2. But I also want to measure what's going on here because I need to make sure everything's working properly. So we're going to go ahead and take my digital multimeter and put a doubler to monitor what's coming out of the voltage control amplifier too. So it's going to go into VCO2. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and utilize that mod wheel trick again. Mod wheel to trigger in to kind of crack open the envelope generator to be able to listen to what's going on. Over here on the SQ1, I want to be on active step. Right. I'm going to make sure I'm on 8 volts, excuse me, 5 volts. I want 5 volts linear. So the input voltage is going to be 5 volts linear, like we talked about, from 0 to 5. Um, I also want to turn off everything else I don't care about right now. We're just going to mess with the first station. Remember, we're going to, we're going to eventually program each of the first four pots, each of the first four sequences on channel A. But for now, we're just going to have channel A first sequence on. Go ahead and turn that on. And go ahead and crack open the gate. Just listen to it. Oh, there we go. Basically, I'm getting nothing, right? So let me go ahead and start dialing up some of this stuff here. One item here to make sure that I'm referencing C3 as my reference. All right, turn that back on. Now what I'm shooting for right now is an output at baseline of D3. We're going to be on the red modal of 2.3. Let's go ahead and get there, shall we? 2.3 volts will be one. You can hear it's not chromatic, right? There's a linear thing going on here. Okay, we're shooting for 2.3. About as close as we're going to get. 2.3, 2.3. We will do this for each subsequent pot. 
The next pot will shoot for 2.738, the next pot 3.074, uh, and the final of the four pots 3.41. So each pot in turn, we will dial in the pot based on a C3 standard for the first modal watching the digital multimeter to lay in that modal. So it's a combination of the voltage input from the SQ1 and the control voltage from the keyboard. At this point, we're just maintaining the control voltage to be at C3, which means that the control voltage is actually coming in at 2.050. We know this is 2.050 volts. That's what we're putting in right now. Got it programmed, shooting for mixolydian, two modals, right? First modal will be controlled by C3, so we're on C3. Let's go ahead and crack this open, give a listen. If I did it properly, my voltages, based on my control voltage at C3, at uh, C3 of 2.040, and SQ1, now again, the SQ1 was a result, we'll get in, this, in the frame here so you can see it, the SQ1 was a result, right, to achieve my output. Doesn't sound too bad, right? The second control voltage then is going to be A2 flat. Not bad, not bad. So these are the two modals, two four note modals. Let's go ahead and toss some speed in here now. Be fast on the key. I'm still not fast enough, but you get the idea. Two modals being driven by the two control voltages, enabling me two mixolydian based modals. Whoo! Oh man! All right, did <laughs> did you hang with me for all 30 minutes? Did you? Right? I really, really hope so. That was. Longest video yet. I, I will promise not to give you such long videos in the future, though you did have some bailout spots. Now, what we've worked through here now, if you follow me through lectures two, three, and lecture four, where we began lectures two and three, only messing with the, zero, the one to eight volt range, and finally today we cracked in other voltage ranges on the SQ1, utilizing the tools and techniques I just showed you, really of all the videos, this video spits out something really cool and really unique, I think. And you can musically work this into your workflow. I hope that's what I brought you. I hope it brought you some inspiration, some creativity, workflow improvements, all that stuff, right? And then also, if you have questions, please do send them to me. I am more than happy, as you guys know, to answer your questions. And you also become the feedstock for additional videos. So feel free to visit me on my channel. Uh, H A apostrophe D L B A H, and then put a space in there and type in YouTube, and I'll be your first hit. Uh, whatever search engine you're using, you'll know you're in the right spot because you'll see that integrated Waz machine picture come up as my banner. Uh, and beyond that, look, uh, stay safe, keep others safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, socially distance. Man, we're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. All right, bless you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.